It is one thing to be popular, but it is often quite another to do what is right. Yoshi Sazawa, also known as Charlene, is someone who did what she thought was right, even at the expense of her popularity. Welcome to the channel everyone. My name is Ian Yarwood and I am a lawyer here in Perth, Western Australia. Charlene had reportedly been at a Kotau party on the night of the 17th of June 2004 and was in good spirits. She vanished on the 18th of June 2004. Searches were conducted for her and her body was eventually found outside in the jungle on the 25th of June 2004. Her body showed signs that she had been dead for some time and that some of the wildlife had pecked at and chewed on her remains. At this time, the widely held belief on Koh Tao was that Charlene had been murdered. As emphasized previously on this channel, I do not know whether she was murdered, but I do regard her death as suspicious. Back then, Facebook was only four months old, so there is no contemporaneous record of her death on social media. For many years, Charlene had been in a de facto relationship with Michael Sputh, the founder of Big Blue Diving Co. Tao, and one can easily imagine that they were living the dream together. However, when Charlene vanished, the two were estranged and Charlene was living alone in a house on Co. Tao. Michael was reportedly in a motorbike accident in late December 2021. Co. Tao is an insanely secretive place, so there are some reports that the accident occurred on Koh Tao, yet other reports that it occurred on Koh Samui. Nevertheless, the best information I received was that in late December 2021 at the Bangkok Hospital Koh Samui, it was discovered that Michael had no brain activity. In other words, he was brain dead. In most jurisdictions around the world, brain death is the definition of death accepted by both the medical profession and the legal profession as there is no recovery from brain death. Although some primitive tribes regard death as occurring upon one's heart ceasing to beat, this is a very unsatisfactory definition. A heart that stopped beating can be restarted. Likewise, a person who has ceased breathing can be resuscitated. Diving instructors should certainly know this. There were no public statements coming from Big Blue Diving in December 2021, although the people in charge found plenty of time to post some frivolous material on their Facebook page. It was not until the 3rd of January 2022 that the people in charge at Big Blue Diving posted a very belated statement on their Facebook page that their founder had died, although virtually no details were provided. The statement referred to Michael's date of birth and gave a date of death as the 1st of January 2022, although as previously mentioned, if Michael was brain dead in December, then that is when he died. The Big Blue Diving Facebook post has triggered a huge reaction in the past few days. It generated over 1,000 reactions, over 50 shares and attracted over 200 comments demonstrating that Michael was a very popular and much loved individual. Charlene's death did not trigger the same reaction because back in June of 2004, very few people had a Facebook account. It is also fair to say that the circumstances surrounding her death have been substantially swept under the carpet. Like Michael, Charlene was also a much loved individual but she also did what she believed was right, which could bring her into conflict with some people. She was an environmentalist and was actively involved in the Koh Tao Dive Operators Club. Charlene also sought to protect female Japanese diving students participating in the Big Blue Chaba program which she ran. It was an open secret on Koh Tao that Charlene became most vocal when she felt that not enough was being done at the dive school to protect those female students. Hopefully, as people are paying their respects to Michael, they also spare a thought for the memory of Charlene because, unfortunately, 
there are too many people trying to erase her memory and the circumstances surrounding her death. Unfortunately, many people with Kotao connections display a visceral hostility to the truth if it involves bad news. In fact, they will attack it with all the charm that a pack of bloodthirsty hyenas exhibit as they tear open the internal organs of a wounded wildebeest. It is not just the Royal Thai Police who attack the truth. Many expats are guilty of the same practice. Many outside observers wonder why so many tourists and Kotao business owners meet an untimely death on the island. Those observers should consider the propensity on the island to sweep the truth under the carpet and shoot the proverbial messengers.